You see that? Out there are the little people you're representing so proudly. You know what they're going to do if you ever get in trouble or need help. No. What? Absolutely nothing. You'll be as forgotten as yesterday's breakfast. I'm the one you want to impress. Ms. Price. Men and women like me. Not Daisy what's her name out there. We're the ones with the power to make or break you. You'd be well advised to remember that. Chesna Breaker and Aranda Price Coruscant, as the center of the galaxy, thrived on the rule of government. It served as the capital of the Republic which kept the peace and prevented a major war in the galaxy for over a thousand years. Under the Republic, the Chancellor and the Senate had a direct influence on the planet's governance. Major events that affected the Republic equally affected Coruscant. In its last years, the Republic's Senate became corrupt, bloated, and ultimately ineffectual, though some continued to fight in the belief of its ability to govern. With the formation of the Empire, the Senate transitioned into a limited role, providing counsel and legislation but ultimately at the power of the Emperor. As Coruscant's government services were strained, the Imperial Senate moved to have each senator open citizen assistance offices that would supplement the work of the local government. While the goal was to primarily assist the members of each senator's homeworld living on Coruscant, the assistance offices were open to help all Coruscanti. At the height of his power, Palpatine disbanded the Senate altogether and gave what little power they had left to the regional governors. At the end of the Galactic Civil War, the New Republic installed a provisional government over Coruscant led by the former Imperial Grand Vizier Marsa Meda. However, the New Republic did not establish its government on Coruscant, choosing instead to rotate the capital among the various member worlds. Under the New Republic, Coruscant was represented by a senator and junior senator, but the planet had come under the control of crime syndicates. Epidemic outbreaks at the starports of Coruscant were controlled by the Coruscant Health Office. Coruscant was policed by the Coruscant Security Force, which utilized police droids on the upper levels together with sentient officers and detectives, and the burly underworld police who patrolled in the cutthroat environment of the lower levels. The Coruscant Ministry of Ingress handled the flow of immigration to and from the planet, and the Galactic Republic Customs of Coruscant Office monitored cargo transports. The Senate had its own protectors, the Senate Guard. Serving under a long tradition, the Senate Guard was a reminder that though the Republic did not have a standing army, it was not defenseless. As the Clone Wars erupted, the clone troopers of the Coruscant Guard worked as peacekeepers and military police, providing a constant reminder of the expanded power of the government, specifically Palpatine. With the formation of the Empire, the Coruscant Guard and Imperial Stormtroopers took over the functions of the Senate Guard, with stormtroopers directly responsible for security on the planet, alongside the civilian Coruscant police.